Hey, what's up? Welcome. I'm so excited to share this with you. My name is Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and I happen to be the proud pastor of the greatest church anywhere known as the New Mountaintop Baptist Church. We are 30 minutes west of Atlanta in a community called Winston. That sits in between Douglasville and Villa Rica. You got to get there. Hey, I'm excited to share with you. This week, we are moving to part number five on our series where we're understanding love through the great commandment and the second greatest commandment, which Jesus commanded us to love God with all of our heart, soul and mind and our neighbor as ourself. Hey, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Love to see your comments, and I'm excited about sharing this with you. You've got to have by now, hopefully, you already have the ebook that goes along with this teaching and all of the PDF handouts. You got to get that, got to open it up, you got to do it, got to do the assignments in order to really get all of the juice possible out of this fruit that's coming from my lips. I don't have time in these concise videos to give you everything so i gave it to you in writing so this is designed to just kind of whet your appetite introduce you to the week's assignment so that you can delve deeper you might even want to share it with a friend a neighbor they may be in colorado or Carrollton or wherever they may be somewhere in a different part of the nation you can share all of this with them and that way you fulfill part of your responsibility as a believer to share the word of god with other people so I'm excited to welcome you to part five. And in this session, we're going to be talking about our love for others. So let's check out our scripture for this week. We're going to jump over to John chapter 13, verse number 34 and verse number 35. And it reads like this. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now listen, <laughs> this verse right here holds back no punches. It just one, two, three, jabs you right quick, lets you know what you got to do. No questions need to be asked. Just do this right here. I love it because it's straight to the point, and that's how I'm going to be in this teaching. Watch this now. The new commandment is that we love one another. Notice, not the new suggestion, <laughs> not the new idea, not the new strategy, not the new possibility if you feel like doing it, but the new commandment, Jesus says, is you must love one another. I already know what you're thinking. That is sometimes so hard. Isn't it much easier to love God because God is good all the time, even though he doesn't always do what we want or give us what we want or grant us our heart's desire. He's still God. He's still great. He's still good. He is in some way far off. So we don't interact with him the way we do human beings. We don't have arguments with God, you know, but when it comes to loving other people, that's a challenge at times. But notice the stipulation on this new commandment that you love one another. Oh, it gets worse as I have loved you. <laughs> now think about who's talking. Christ here is talking. He's saying that we have to love other people the way that he's loved us. Now, in make, making that statement, he really frees us because he loved us in spite of ourselves before we knew him. Now, here's a clue that might help you in loving other people. You have to look beyond the moment and you have to see the value that is coming at a point in that person's life. Look beyond the moment, the moment of frustration, look beyond the moment of the argument, look beyond the moment of the disagreement and see that there's something greater inside that person. And you love them not based on what you see today, what you hear today, what you perceive today, but on the greatness that is inside of them that is gonna come through them at some point. And you love that person as Christ did. 
you know, Christ loved us before we ever even born. He gave him himself his entire life for us that we could be free and have a relationship with God the Father. And Jesus says to us, this is a must do because it is by this. What is this? Back up. Our loving one another as he has loved us. That is simply without restraint, unconditional. It is by that that all men will know that you are indeed my disciples. Watch this. Not by your dancing at church, because we don't get to church like we used to anymore. Don't know if we ever will get to church the way we used to back in the day anymore. So it's not by your dance. It's not even by your duty in church. It's not by the fact that you're an usher or you are in the choir or what have you, your minister, your deacon or whatever. That's not how people know that you are a disciple. It's not by your usher's badge or your deacon's badge. My name is deacon so-and-so. It's not by your clergy collar if you're in ministry. But it is by your love one to another. Now, here's something really exciting I see in that verse. And I know you're like, well, please show it to me because I'm not excited yet. It's your love one to another, not necessarily your love one for another. Okay, what's the difference? I'm glad you asked your great class. The difference is that your discipleship, which means your fellowship of Christ, your desire to give up your thoughts, follow in his way, do what he says, is not correlated to how other people treat you. But a sign of your fellowship of Christ is how you behave toward others. So even if a person dislikes you or is not very friendly to you, your job as a disciple is to still give love to them. It's not based on harmony. It's based on what you give to other people. Now that freed me up quite a bit because there are people, even who are Christians, who I just don't get along with and I don't even talk to them anymore. Doesn't mean I haven't forgiven them. I have. But there are times that you have to let go and move forward because there will never be any harmony. At the same time, though there are, and there are not many, but though there are people who fall into that category in my personal life, I love them. And if I, if I could help them, I would. In fact, I have helped them. Sometimes you help people by what you do or say. Then there are other times you help people and show love by what you don't do that you could do (laughs) and what you don't say that you could say. And so in that way, discipleship is truly best known and identified by the love and kindness that you extend toward other people. That's so powerful. Wow. So we understand some things from this powerful passage here in John that Jesus says to us, because it's from this command to love God that there is a necessary outflow. Because out of the command to love God comes the command to love others. And they are inextricably linked. You can't separate one from the other. Now, here's a truth. Don't tell anybody I said this. It's just between me and you. You can love people and not necessarily interact with people. You can love people and not necessarily like what they do or how they are. That's liberating because you can still please God and still protect your integrity or your identity or your relationship or your heart. And that to me is so incredibly powerful. It's freeing actually. You see, all people are created in God's image. Every human being is worthy of God's love and our love. Everybody, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, you name it. 
everyone is God's creation and everyone deser- deserves God's love and even our love. And again, you have to define love because love is not always hanging out, going to Shoney's together. I don't know if Shoney still exists, but you know what I'm saying. Golden Corral for those of you that like that. That's not necessarily uh, the definition of love. But loving again can be when you pray for someone with whom you no longer speak and you still pray God's blessings for their life. That's love, my friends. And everyone deserves God's love and our love. You see, it's a part of our calling as Christians to love other people. It's part of your calling. And the way that we love ourselves is the way that we're supposed to love other people. So let's break that down. What does that mean? Well, simply this. You would not take a knife and stab yourself. You wouldn't take a knife and put it behind you and stab yourself in the back. And so love displayed is not being a gossiper. It's not setting someone up. It's not trying to make things hard for someone. That's love in its purest display. You know, Jesus tells us that the way Christ loved us will enable us to live in peace with one another. And that is so profound. We can live in peace with people. Peace is not always, again, getting in the car together, going to Cracker Barrel. Sometimes peace is you stay on that side of town, I'll be on this side of town, and we'll keep peace. And you have to apply these things in order to really see how the hand of God works through love one for another. So again, in summary, you may not like everything about anybody, but you can love everybody. We can love even from a distance because many of us may have been through things where the person that did it to us is no longer on the planet. Maybe they are sleeping in their grave. And maybe you didn't get that chance to express your thoughts or your feelings, but you could still carry love in your heart for that person because love is greater than death. (laughs) I love it, y'all. I really do. Hey, as we end each session, this week is no exception. I want to lead you in a specific prayer, and I want you to pray this right along with me. Loving Father, you have first loved me, so therefore... I have your love within me. All people have been created in your image and are worthy of being loved. You have called me to love others the way I love myself. You have also called me to love others the way you love me. Loving others the way you have called me to will help me live at peace with the people around me. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, I hope you got something out of this teaching. Make sure that you get the free PDF ebook and handouts that go along with it. It'll help you to dive much deeper. Next week, we're going into part six, and we're going to be talking about Jesus who is our loving example. And boy, do we ever need an example of love in the times that we're living in. Hey, I love you. Make sure you keep up with your studies, with the ebook that goes along with this. Look forward to sharing part six with you next week. Take care.